many new experiences are heading our way in the mobile and intranet in general, ship and online in general point of view. Let me show you the enhancements and how things are changing. A new SharePoint mobile app is coming, finally. It will come to iOS first, so Apple devices, and then after that, later in the year, it will be coming for Android and Windows Phone as well. The Sites tab, or the Sites view, like this one right here, will show you all the sites that you're following, or the sites that you've recently been to, or also, of course, the sites that you have created yourself. So all that stuff is going to appear right here in the list of sites. And you can see all the activity also in the following tab to see exactly what's going on and anything that's happening there. The Links tab, which is this one right here, that would take you to a view where you can see links to all the different sites that are available to everybody in the company. There's also a People view. So if you click on this People view right here, that will show you information about the different people. Uh, if you click on some person like Susan in this case, it will show you all the information that's exposed for Susan, exactly who she's working with, and the type of work she's doing currently, what she's working on, documents, etc. All that stuff is right there. So this SharePoint mobile app once again comes to iOS or Apple devices first, and then later it will come later in 2016 to Android and Windows Phone. From within Office 365, when you click on the waffle, this top left button, you see the Sites button right here. When you click on Sites, currently you get to this page. And this page shows, of course, some of the sites that you're following, recent sites, some recommended sites, etc. This is what it looks like today. But things are changing, and how it's going to look like, it's different in the future, in the near future. The first thing that will be changing is going to be this tiles name. So instead of sites, it's going to say SharePoint, which it really, what that's what it is, right? So it's going to say that, and the whole layout of this page is going to be different better looking and much more intuitive to people. Here's what's coming in the future. So instead of the sites tile, we would see the SharePoint tile like this. Once you click on the SharePoint tile, you would see a page like the one that's here. So a few things to note in here is first you would see the sites that you frequently visit. You would also see the sites that you're a part of or the sites that you've created. You would see all the following sites the sites that you that you're following you also see of course links to sites uh, so you can manage the links yourself as well and last definitely but not the least is you have the capability to create new sites directly from here which would make sense obviously so you're looking at all the sites that you're part of that you frequently visit and you can make a new site directly from here as well there has been a debate going on as to whether we should be using Office 65 groups or should we be using SharePoint team sites. So in a nutshell, here's what a group looks like. I go to Visual SP Research and I have my conversations, calendar, files, notebook connectors, a lot of good stuff. I see the people who are members of the site, but I don't have certain other things that I would like that appear in a team site, like a page, for example or announcement list or web parse or other things that I'm pretty used to in a regular team site, right? The direction that Microsoft is now taking is you can have an Office 365 group and a team site associated with the group. So when you make a group like this, you would get automatically a team site underneath it as well. So then you get the power of a team site of everything that I mentioned in addition to things like forms and workflows, so processes, everything. Here's what a team site would look like. So it shows right there, for example, the members that are part of that group. And uh, the same members show up here as well. It would give you the option directly to go back to Outlook if you wanted to, so you don't get lost as to where am I, how did I get from the group to this site. And then you have all the different lists and libraries and processes and everything, access to everything that a team site would have directly associated to the group that you're part of. So you get best of both worlds. In the modern SharePoint document libraries experience, 
there's a bunch of different changes to look out for. So for example, you can click on a document, for example, something like this, and then say, I want to pin it to top. So here's a pin to top button. And then it would pin that document directly to the top of the document library. So it's much more highlighted. You can select a document, you can move it directly from here to somewhere else if you wanted to. You can copy it to somewhere else, to a different location within your site directly. Also a very useful feature is you can go ahead now and make new links to documents which are not here. So when you make a new link to a document which resides in this document library but the actual document is somewhere else, it would appear something like this with this globe icon or like this right here or like that. So these are all actual links. They don't, they're not documents that are sitting here but they're links to documents somewhere in an outside repository. The search experience is also getting really really better, much better now. So you go to search right here, start typing in real-time full-text search. You start typing things in and in the body of the document library right here you will start seeing your results right as you type. So a lot of good advancements coming to SharePoint document library and the modern document library experience. There's a new service that was announced recently called Microsoft Flow. Still in preview right now, but basically this lets you connect different apps and services that you have access to on the web. So if you go down over here at flow.microsoft.com, you can see that the different services include things like Dropbox, OneDrive, Twitter, Salesforce, also SharePoint as well in this case. If I keep on going here there's different templates, different recipes basically of what a flow could contain. So some of these recipes for example one here is save my email attachment to a SharePoint document library or create a Dynamics CRM entry entity for items in a SharePoint list that I've approved. There are a bunch of different templates you can use directly to automate some of the processes within SharePoint and with other services that you have access to. So if I click on a template, click on use this template, it will start creating the different variables and then I can go ahead and access the flow. Currently all the stuff is outside of SharePoint so it's on a separate site over here but the Microsoft flow functionality will come and be available direct, directly within SharePoint document libraries and within SharePoint lists. So then from there you can also create these experiences, these, this connectivity between services and start it off directly from the library or the list. So this would be kind of analogous to making the no-code workflows within SharePoint directly with the web interface like this. The site contents page on a SharePoint site is also getting an uplift. So for example, currently if I go to site contents, it would show me all my apps, uh, access to site workflow settings, recycle bin, etc. What's coming for site contents is a view that would give me a lot more information than just the site contents. So yes, the content will still be here. Uh, also the subsites there under the site would be here as well. But in addition to that, you get things such as analytics, the visits on the site. If it's trending down or trending upward, that information is right there as well. And then also the exact trending content, what's happening on the site, what content is good and what's getting a lot of views. All that information would be in the site contents page like this. Lots of cool changes and updates, enhancements to the way we do things currently. So continue to keep an eye out for the things that are going on. The story is still evolving and will continue to change. Hopefully with an eye on having the users use their intranet easily from desktops, laptops and mobile devices and be able to collaborate and share information just as easily.